Happy New Year, 2023. Welcome. First Bible this morning. Amen. You guys are probably stayed up last night, didn't you? Okay. I mean, how many here actually stayed up till at least midnight? Why? My hand, no, my hand down. I, I went to sleep at 1030. Okay. I, I be, I'm at that age now, you know, where you can only go so far and then, man, you're just out. Now, I did get up at 1230 and then went, you know, wow, the new year, you know. And so I said, happy new year. And that was it. And I went back to bed. Amen. So there you go. Now, I remember in Zambia years ago when uh, midnight would happen at the mission, you know, so quiet, you know, and. Usually during that time of the year, you know, the rains are coming and electricity is usually off. So it's very, very dark on the mission. And I know Stacy and the girls and mom and I would run out with those wooden spoons and our uh, um, uh, pots and pans. And we would run out after midnight and start hooping and hollering as loud as we could. And, of course, we're in the middle of the bush, you know, and it's about a few hundred yards to the nearest village and for other people, but I always wondered, I wonder what they thought was happening, you know, at the mission station with all these crazy, crazy Mazungus that are screaming and shouting, and then, of course, we'd go back in and, and go to bed, but uh, as I got older now, and all the kids are gone, and, uh, you know, it, uh, I like my sleep, I mean, I, you know, and until the fireworks started going off, I kind of you know, I, I was all right, but then, you know, I felt like we were under attack, and, you know, I was at the Alamo, and, you know, victory or death, you know, and I wanted to go out and shut everybody up, if you know what I mean, but uh, anyway, Happy New Year! Man, 2022 is gone, man, it's, it's, it's in the books, and here we are, 2023, and I, I just pray that, uh, I guess what, this could be the year that we hear a trumpet. This could be the year, church, we hear a voice. Okay, This could be the year where he says, come up hither, <laughs> boom, and we're gone. Because, you know, guess what? I, I've read the end of the book and the New Testament, and guess what? We're, we're living in those days. We're living in those last days before the coming of the Lord. Remember those Old Testament prophets, okay, they didn't see the church age. Remember that. They didn't see it. What they saw was the second coming of Christ, which is after the tribulation time. You say, why didn't they see the church age? Because the church age was a mystery. And it wasn't given until the fellow by the name of Paul came on the scene. And so Paul was given the mystery of the church age. And so he taught that one day, the Lord is coming in the clouds, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. And there's going to be a trumpet. There's going to be a voice. And the dead in Christ shall rise. And that we which are, remain shall be caught up together with the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. And that's going to happen before the tribulation time. And if you don't have your heads in the sand and you look around at this world and you're paying attention, there's some things that are going on. I got off the phone with Ronnie Gianetto. Ronnie's my buddy from Rochester. He's the one that wrote the Little Red Book, those tracks that we have that, you know, the Gospel of Blue Springs. He wrote those, and he goes out tracking every day. And so Ronnie's been listening. He's a big prophecy guy. He's listened to everything. Well, he sent me a, 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 a YouTube video that there are, there's a group of rabbis in Israel today and have been for since I think November 20th, somewhere right around there, that claim that the Messiah is with them. Okay, that he's there in Israel. Of course, the Bible says we know that in the end time, many shall come in my name, many antichrists shall come, that and that and that. Well, here's the guy that they say is the Messiah of Israel. Matter of fact, they've even said that he's done six or seven miracles. I mean, that people have saw, confirmed, and everything, and they're all excited, and even, uh, I don't even know if I could pronounce his, pronunciate his name correctly, but the former minister, Netanyahu, is that his name, Netanyahu? Well, he even came on and said, 
we need to build the temple this next year, 2023, at least begin the temple. So I'm thinking, wow, if all that's happening, and it's a prelude to what? The tribulation and the real antichrist that's coming, guess what happens before that? We go. Amen. We go. And by the way, even if we don't go and the rapture happens years from now, some of us may walk through that door this year of seeing Jesus face to face. Amen. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So we know, we know we've lost loved ones this, this year, this past year. And, and just recently, we know of friends and family that have gone on to be with the Lord. And, but I just want to encourage you here that 2023 is set before us. It's a new year. What are we going to do for him in 2023? You know, this world has uh, really got a hold of us. I say us. And it sort of pulls us away from doing what God has called the church to do. And it's so easy to get caught up in that and get caught up in the holiday season. There's an old hymn, that, that one of my favorite hymns, and it's talked about, I am resolved. And I'm not going to sing it for you this morning, but it says, I am resolved no longer to linger, charmed by the world's delight. Things that are higher, things that are nobler, these have allured my sight. You see, when we start setting our affections on the things of the world and on our physical problems and physical situations in our life, we forget the eternal life, the promises of God's Word and what's going to take place after we die or when the rapture takes place. It says, I am resolved to go to the Savior, leaving my sin and strife. He is the true one. He is the just one. He hath the words of life. I am resolved to follow the Savior, faithful and true each day. Heed what he saith, do what he willeth. He, our Savior, is the living way. And the last verse of that song says, I am resolved. Who then will go with me? Come, friend, without delay, taught by the Bible, led by the Spirit, we will walk in the heavenly way. I am resolved. I am resolved. I am steadfast. I'm going to follow the Lord in 2023. I would ask that you all pray, please, for our pastor. I got a phone call just a couple days ago. Uh, pastor Mark has uh, tweaked his ankle or his Achilles, uh, and they don't really know what it is. But, you know, when we get older, you know, Tom, we get older and, you know, we, we don't have that young body where it just, you know, it turns and your mind works with your feet and all of that stuff and everything is synchronized really well. When you get older, it takes a lot for that information to get down to your feet. So I think what happened to Mark, it happens to me quite a bit. I'm thinking about going here, but my body doesn't move in that direction. You know what I mean? And so when you go to turn, all of a sudden you fall. And that's one of the reasons why we're playing softball out there a few years ago. It wasn't my heart. It was the fact that a ball was hit like about right here on the ground, and I went to move, and I just fell down. I caught the ball, and everybody goes, wow, he dove for the ball. No, I didn't die for the ball. I just turned and fell, okay? And I realized that I shouldn't be out here because if I fall, I'm going to end up breaking something. I know, pretty, pretty easy. Well, anyway, that's what happened to our pastor. He was walking down some stairs, I heard, and twisted and sent me some pictures of his swollen foot. So he's off of his foot for a few days. So please pray for Mark and uh, pray for his healing that he'd be back real soon. So I'm pinch hitting. And in all of my career of, uh, of, of baseball, uh, I never pinch hit for anybody. I just want you to know that. I was pinch hit a lot for, okay? But uh, I, was never, I was never asked to be the pinch hitter. You know, every year, 
every year, many of us make some resolutions. You know, and a lot of times those resolutions kind of fall by the wayside, don't they? Uh, many of our resolutions have to do with physical, physical resolutions. So the title of the message today is Resolution Revival. Let's bring to life the resolutions that we make. You say, well, Brother Bobby, I don't make any resolutions. Well, maybe we should, but not so much physical resolutions like, you know what, I think I just need to lose some weight. And I know that's a good thing, you know, I understand that. And, uh, you know, some people say, well, I need to lose 10 pounds or I need to lose 100 pounds or I need to do this or I'm just going to eat right this year. That's what I'm going to do, Lord. And then all of a sudden you go to grandma's house or you go out to somebody's buffet and all of a sudden it just kind of, those resolutions fall by the wayside. And you might say, well, just this one time won't hurt me. And, of course, now you're kind of hooked into keeping on, keeping on because you enjoy that. Nobody likes to eat, I don't think, more than myself. I, I love to, to eat. And so trouble is, getting a little older now, uh, things just don't, I get full quicker. And so that's why I'm not as, as heavy as I could be, there's no doubt. And so maybe we make a resolution like, you know, I think I'm just going to be more nice this year. And then somebody cuts us off in traffic, and boy, that goes out the window. You know, there it goes. And uh, maybe we even throw in some spiritual, spiritual resolutions like, you know what, I want to read my Bible through this year. I've never done it before, but I'd like to take 2023 and I'd like to read from Genesis all the way to Revelation. I'd like to lead, read the entire Bible this year. Or maybe we just want to read the Bible every day. Maybe not really interested in reading the whole Bible, but I just want to be in the Word of God every day. I make that resolution. Or maybe we say, I want to pray more. Or maybe we want to say, Lord, I want to witness more. Lord, I, I, I want to be able to pass out the Word of God. I want to be able to give out a track more. Lord, would, would, would this year I will be more bold in my voice for you this year. It's a physical resolution. How did we do in 2022? Did we make any? How did we do? Did we fulfill all of those resolutions that we made? Or did we even make a resolution last year? You know, to make a resolution, it all boils down to one thing, really. It's our desire. Do we really desire to do something for the Lord? I invite you to turn to Proverbs chapter number 18 with me. Proverbs chapter number 18, right after the book of Psalms, book of Proverbs chapter number 18 in verse number one. It says in verse number one, through desire, a man having separated himself. I got to get rid of the self. I got to get rid of what the self wants and the desires of myself. So I've got to separate myself, and I'm going to seek and intermeddleth with all wisdom. Wisdom. You know, in studying the Bible, we, are, we want that knowledge. We want to be able to have the knowledge of the Word of God. And we want to be able to understand the Word of God, to have that spiritual discernment to understand exactly what that knowledge is talking about. And what wisdom is, wisdom is the ability to apply the Word of God to our lives, to have that wisdom, to have the knowledge, to have the understanding, and then to have the wisdom of God. What do we desire the most out of our life? Why do not our desires, when it comes to knowing God, seem to shift to other areas of our lives. Through desire, a man, having separated himself, seeketh and intermeddleth with all wisdom. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this morning. Thank you for bringing us together. Lord, your word says we're two or more gathered in your name. You're here. 
But Lord, we claim the promises of your word. You said it's impossible for you to lie, that your word is true and your word is faithful. So God, bless your word as only you can do. God, be with our pastor. I pray you send healing to his body. And so God, bless your word. Speak to us today. Lord, do a work. Do your work. Lord, have your way. Lord, your will in our lives today. In Jesus' name, amen. It was, I was looking up the definition of resolution. A resolution, the definition, is a firm decision to do something or not to do something. I'm going to make a firm decision, okay? There's a term in the Bible called a vow. And the Bible says that the vow is very serious, And that when you make a vow to God, you are to keep that vow, to do everything that you can to keep that vow, that you make that firm decision to keep that vow. Well, that's what a resolution is. It's a firm decision to do something. It's a resolve, okay? What does the word resolve mean? It means means to be determined in purpose. There's a purpose involved in what we're going to be doing. There's a purpose involved in what we are to be doing. You see, you and I have been saved for reason. God saved us for a purpose in our life. He saved you. He saved me. You say, what is that purpose, okay? Well, let's look at the Bible. Let's look what it says. Let's look at Revelations chapter number 4. Revelations chapter 4, verse number 11. It's on your screen up there. It says, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive what? Glory and honor and power, for Thou hast created all things, and for Thy pleasure they are and were created. You and I have been created to bring God glory in our life, okay? You and I have been created to bring honor to the name of God, to do everything we can for His glory. Whatsoever ye do in word, in deed, whatever you eat, whatever you drink, whatever it is, do all for the glory of God. Our lives are to be that picture of the glory and honor of God and to allow His power to work in us and through us. You know, the Bible says in the Old Testament, where the words of the king is, there's power. We have the words of the king, the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Jesus said, heaven and earth shall not pass away, but by words, okay, the heaven and earth is going to pass away, but my words shall not pass away. They're eternal. They're written forever. The eternal word of God. But unfortunately, we have an enemy, and that enemy has slowly crept into the churches today. It slowly crept in to the Christian minds today. The Christian minds have been conformed to some kind of a modern spirit, the spirit that is, that, that spawns great thoughts of men and leaves only a little room for the thoughts about God. When was the last time we went the whole day, <coughs> whatever we said, whatever we did, wherever we went, we had the mind of Christ and we're thinking about my life bringing glory to him today. It's so easy for us to get caught up in what we're doing and how we're doing it. Christian minds have been confused by the modern skepticism. I hear it all the time. I received an email. I almost get one once a week. As soon as I make a comment about the perfect word of God, I get comments Well, you know, only the originals are perfect. Or how can you say this book is perfect or this book is perfect? You know, all Bibles have mistakes in them. And I'm constantly bombarded with with texts and messages for me to try to explain my belief. 
Let me tell you something. I believe. I believe there was a God who created this world. And he didn't go into his tool shop and whittle it away and take millions of years. He spoke it. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. God's Word. What makes you think and what makes us think in our finite minds, if we really believe that God created everything, can't God preserve something that's pure and right for us to understand If he wants us to live in his purpose, if he's directing us to live in his divine purpose, then we got to know what it is. And he's given it to us. His word. His word is powerful. (coughs) Powerful. See, the purpose is for his glory. It's not my interpretation of the Word of God, for the Word of God is not of any private interpretation. But the Bible says that holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. That God put this thing together. It all boils down to one thing, folks. Faith. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. Are we spending the time in the Word believing that this is in fact the Word of the living God. There's five basic truths I want to share with you this morning. The foundational principles of the knowledge about God which Christians should have. You know, when we, Pastor Mark and I, when we began the Discover classes years ago, 12 years ago or so when we put these classes together for new members to learn what this church is all about. And those of you that went through it, if you can remember lesson three, lesson three was about the foundation of what we believe in. And we talked about the five pillars of our church that are found in the book of Hebrews chapter 11 because it's the great faith chapter. It's all about faith. Hebrews eleven six 6 says, For without faith it's impossible to please God. Impossible to please God without faith. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. It's impossible to please God by not walking and living in this word. It's impossible to please him without the word, without the faith that we know. And so, The thing about it, what do we think about the Word of God? As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. You see, five basic truths I want to look at that determine our course of thought. Number one, God has spoken to man and the Bible. In his word, it's given to us to make us wise unto salvation. God speaks through his word. Somebody asked me one time, well, if I could just hear the audible voice of God, I would believe. Take your Bible and read it out loud. You will hear God speak. Okay? Put some headphones on. Listen to the Word of God. Let God speak to you. Prayer is when we speak to God. His Word is when He speaks to us. Okay? Let us resolve to engage this year, 2023, in God's path. Okay? In the path of God goes right back to Hebrews 11.1. And we know, number one, that the worlds were framed by what? The Word of God. It starts with the Word of God. Psalms 119, verse 105. Thy Word is what? A lamp unto my feet. A light unto my what? My path, right? Okay? 
the Word of God. It's got to start there. I need to engage it, engage in God's path. I need to resolve. I need to make a commitment. I need to make a resolution. I need to make a vow to the Lord. God, help me to read your Word on a daily basis. Help me to understand it. Lord, give me knowledge. Lord, help me to have the wisdom to apply it to my very life. The Word is so powerful that it touches our soul. Woo! I don't know about you guys, but I heard that during the first service, there was a lady that got saved. Somebody came up to me and said, hey, I just want you to know lady got saved after the first service. You know what? The Word of God touched her soul. The Bible says you're not born again by corruptible things, but by incorruptible, by the Word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. The Word of God is so powerful, so quick. Hebrews 4.12, it's quick. It goes right in to the bones and marrow, right into the blood, man. goes right inside. It's a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. You say, well, brother, I just don't understand the Word of God. Then guess what? The Bible has an answer for that. For the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. You think the Word of God is foolish? You don't understand the Word of God? Chances are you're not saved. You're not born again. You're not going to go to heaven. You're going to burn in hell forever because you're not born again. You see, the Word of God can speak to our hearts. It can what? It can touch our soul. And the Word of God can teach our spirit. Okay? Like it says over there in 1 Corinthians 2, again, the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. They're foolishness unto him. But the saved person, he can understand it. He teaches us by his Spirit. Jesus said, if I go away, I'll send the Comforter. He shall teach you all things. The Spirit of God touches our soul. The Spirit of God teaches our spirit. The Word of God tames our body. I'm not the man I used to be. I'm born again by the Spirit of the living God. God changed my life. I don't do those things anymore. I don't hang out with that crowd anymore unless I'm going to tell them about Jesus. And you know what they do? They end up running away, most of them, because they don't want to hear the truth. What fellowship hath light with darkness? And so again, it tames our body. It says over in the book of Psalms, it's, How shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. You know, once someone told me a long time ago, the Bible will keep you from sin or sin will keep you from the Bible. How are we doing so far? See, God speaks through his word. Look at 2 Peter chapter 1. I think it's up on the screen there. There it is. We have also a more sure word of prophecy where until you do well that you take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star rise in your heart, knowing this first that no prophecy of the Scripture is of any private interpretation, for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. We need to engage in God's plan. God has given us a road map. God has given us a plan, and we need to become a part of that in 2023. I don't want to be left in the dark. I want to be able to see the light and walk in the light and walk in that lamp and be filled with the Word of God and understand and have the wisdom to apply it to my life in 2023. Maybe some of us need to start reading our Bible more. Maybe some of us need to engage in the Bible Institute or in a small group or, or whatever the case may be. Discipleship, be discipled by somebody to learn the Word of God. Hide the Word of God in your heart in 2023. Number two, God speaks through His Word. God is Lord and King. 
He's Lord and King. He rules all things for his glory. He displays his reflections in all that he does. He is good. His mercy endureth forever. Men and angels, they worship him. You see, we need to engage in God's person, in Jesus, in Jesus. Did you hear the songs this morning? In a few minutes, we're going to have the Lord's Supper. This is all about Jesus. It's all about him. It's all about the glory of God. Jesus, receive the honor. Lord, by your power of the resurrection, you have given us the power of the Holy Ghost to be able to live our lives the way you desire us to live our lives. We need to engage in God's person. You know, even when Jesus, when Mary found out the Virgin Mary was carrying the Lord Jesus Christ, and she went to talk to, to the other woman, John the Baptist's mama, who John the Baptist was in the womb. And the Bible says that the announcement of the virgin being conceived, another baby in the womb leaped for joy, filled with the Holy Ghost in Luke chapter 1 because of his conception, his coming to this virgin. When the shepherds came in Luke chapter 2, they gave glory to God in the highest and they worshiped this King Jesus. The wise man of Matthew chapter number 2, when they came and they traveled, however many there were, they presented gifts and they, the Bible says they worshiped him. All through the New Testament, people would come and they would fall down. And the Bible says they worshiped him. They worshiped him. They worshiped him. Why? Because he's God. <coughs> Manifest in the flesh. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy. All through the Gospels, <coughs> people worship. Jesus. They gave him glory. See, all the other religions, they believe in Jesus. You know that? Some say he was a prophet. Some say he was a good man. Boy, but when you tell them Jesus is God, manifest in the flesh, risen from the dead, he's God. They freak out. How can God be a Father and a Son and a Holy Ghost? There's three gods. No, there's one God. Just like there's one of me and there's one of you. The Bible says in Genesis 1 or whatever right there, right? In the beginning, God, right? And then later on he says, let us, plural, make man in our image after our likeness. We are a trichotomy of man. We are a three-part being. We have a mind, we have a heart, we have a will. We have a body, we have a soul, and we have a spirit. And guess what? 1 John 5, 7. 1 John 5, 7. This may ruffle some feathers here, but that's okay, I don't mind. I'll get another email or text from somebody, I'm sure. The KJV is the only book that says this. For there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, capital W, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. You look it up in all the other Bibles, it doesn't say that. It doesn't say that. You say, how do you know the Word is Jesus? John 1, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. The Word was made flesh, dwelt among us. Hello. 
Why do you think this church is called First Bible Baptist Church? We actually believe this to be God's Word. Do you? What about 2023? Are you resolved to believe what God says in His Word? That God is Lord, He is King, He is Sovereign, He is Eternal, He has the words of life. Number three, God is the Savior. God is Savior. He's active in sovereign love through the Lord Jesus Christ to rescue you and rescue me from the power over sin. Woo! Because of him in my life, he's given me that power to say what? No to sin. Before I got saved, I didn't have the power to say no. I thought I did, but I didn't. But because of him living in me, because of the glory, because of the honor, because of the power that he's placed in me by the Holy Ghost, in you if you're born again by the Spirit of God, we can say no to sin and yes to God. Are we going to do that for 2023? Are we going to say yes to him? God is my Savior. He's active in his love. He rescues us from sin. And he adopts me into his family. I'm his child. Hallelujah. See, we need to engage in his purpose. We have his path, the word, right? We have his person, Jesus Christ, the Savior. And we have his purpose. What did Jesus say in John 14? He says, if ye love me, Keep my commandments. You want to walk with God? See, go back to Hebrews 11. The world's were framed by the word of God. Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice, worship. He says, Enoch walked with God. God took him. Right? You got your word. You got your worship. You got your walk. We need to engage in God's purpose, his walk obedience, John 14, 15. Jesus also said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. How'd you do in 2022? Did you catch any fish? How about 2023? You want to go fishing? Want to catch some fish? You want to catch some men? Want to catch some women? Want to catch some souls for the Lord Jesus Christ? Number four, God is that triune God, that blessed Trinity. There are within the Godhead three persons, one God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And the work of salvation is one in which all three are active together. The Father purposing redemption. The Son coming to secure that redemption through His blood. And the Holy Spirit then applying it in us. And the Spirit of God comes in and sets us free. We need to engage in God's provision. We need to engage in his work. We need to engage in walking by faith. We need to sow seed of the word of God. We need to water the seed of the word of God and let God give the increase. Let's give the gospel out. We need to be involved If you are a member of First Bible Baptist Church, you need to be involved in the evangelistic efforts of First Bible Baptist Church at home missions and missions abroad. We have ADP Sports. What an opportunity for us to share the gospel, right, Brother Tom? An opportunity to share. Some of those kids out there have never 
heard the name of Jesus. Not once. And if they have, they don't know him. They don't know that he's the God. They don't know that he's the way, the truth, and the life. They don't know any of that. And who's going to tell them? We're commanded to go. We're commanded to tell them who Jesus Christ is. Are we engaged in God's provision? And then number five, godliness means responding to God's revelation in trust and obedience. I'm going to trust him. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. You know, I don't know why I, I, I'm, st I'm still here. I, I'm, you know, other than, Lord, take me for your glory, for your honor. Lord, use me if you want to. Take me home if you want to. I just trust you. I just trust you. Becky and I came off our third bout of COVID since this thing's hit. You know, and even going on before that, you know, with a heart and all the other stuff. And I look at my life and I'm going, wow, why in the world am I still here? Man, I should have gone home so many times, but he just left me around. I don't know. He's just not done, I guess. Amen. That's okay. By the way, that's okay. You know, I, I don't know what 2023 is going to bring. Maybe Jesus coming in the clouds. May not be for 10 years, but I know one thing. He's coming. And I trust he's coming. I'm trusting him. And I want to obey him. I want to do what I can by faith in the word of God. I want to worship him in John 4, in spirit and in truth. I want to be in prayer. I want to have a prayer life. I want to seek his face, not just his hands, not just his provision, not just my needs. He knows what I have need of before I even ask. What he wants is a relationship with us. He wants a, us to talk to him. He wants us to listen to him as he speaks to us. And then what about submission and what about service? We need to engage in God's place. This is the place where God has put us right now. This is the place. Let's engage in that mission. This morning, when I got up very early, I received a text from my daughter, Angela. I want to share her text to you this morning. I wept when I read it this morning. I wept when I read it in the first service. I'll probably weep again here when I read it to you. She wrote and she said, Genesis 1-1, in the beginning, God. And then she put a couple of dots and then she went, wow. Think about that. He's our God. He's my God. The creator of this whole thing. The creator of his plan. He says this, wow. What more do we need? I sat there on the bed as I was thinking this morning, oh, Lord, I'd like to have this. I need this. I need this. I I don't need those things. You enjoy Christmas? You get a lot more junk? Packed up the old junk and now you got new junk? I mean, that's kind of the way we do it, right? What do we need? He said, what more do we need? What more do we want? Is Lord in the beginning of all this new year, 2023, beginning of my thoughts? God, 
You're the beginning. My thoughts. God, you're the beginning of my motives. Why do I do what I do? She said, God, you're the beginning of my steps. God, you are the word of God. And Lord, you speak it all. And Lord, you make your word a reality on my walk and my life for your glory. Amen. How are we doing? In a few minutes, we're going to take the Lord's Supper. And I know many churches probably across this land or many Christians. Maybe you did something last night, I don't know. Maybe you want to do something this morning. Make a resolution. <clears throat> Determine that this year, 2023, Lord, I want to be engaged in your plan. Lord, I want to read your word. I want it to speak to me. Lord, I want to be engaged in your person. I want to know Jesus. I want to have a sweet relationship with my Savior. Lord, I want you to fulfill that purpose in my life for 2023. Lord, I want to be engaged in a walk of obedience. Lord, I want to be engaged in your work right here. Lord, I want to be engaged at First Bible Baptist Church in 2023. We've all been given a schedule of what's taking place this year. Our pastor will preach on that next Sunday. But I hope you'll take this message and you'll go back to the beginning. Are my decisions based upon my relationship with God? Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Then all these things. But seek him with all your heart. So we're going to take just a few minutes. You don't have to come forward if you don't want to. You can do it right there where you're at. Because we're going to take the Lord's Supper. But I want to give us all an opportunity to talk to the Savior about 2023. Maybe we want to make a commitment. Lord, I want to read your word every day. Lord, I want to read through. Lord, I want to learn. I want a prayer life. I want to be discipled. I want to, I want to work in ADP. I want, to, I want to tell those kids about Jesus. I want to go to the mission field. I want to go on a trip with Randy. Lord, I, this is what I want to do. I want to do something for you in 2023. I want to put myself aside and do something for you and for your glory, for your honor. Use me. Use me in 2023. Let's pray. Father, Lord, we come in the name of Jesus right now. Lord, all of us here, Lord, we have needs. An old preacher, Lord, told me a long time ago that we have mountains in our life where we're so close to God. Lord, we just almost, we can't even breathe without God helping us breathe. We're so close. We're on that top. And Lord, it's a special time with you, but Lord, it doesn't take too long, and it seems like we're down in the valley. Ooh. Go through some hard times in the valley. We see death in the valley. We see all kinds of pain, discomfort. But Lord, there's also growth in the valley. But this preacher told me, he said, you don't need to fear when you're in the valley, in that place of growth. You need to farm your valley. 
You need to continue to plant the seed in the valley. You need to continue to water the seed in the valley. You need to continue to bring glory and honor and power and worship you in the valley. So God, I pray right now, Father, the commitments we're making, Lord, you're omniscient, you're all-knowing, you hear. Help them to be true, Lord. I'm resolved. I'm determined with a purpose. And Lord, I'm going to read my Bible. Lord, I'm going to pray. Lord, give me something to do. Let me look around. Father, show me what you want me to do. Help me to get involved because you are worthy of all of it. So, Father, bless now, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen.